With the Naira redesign and its accompanying challenges taking center stage just before the 2023 general election, coupled with the government's explanation that it's all meant to curb vote by, some people are already picking holes with the argument. To those backing the argument, does it then mean that the national currency will be redesigned at every election cycle? As we progress, we are now being joined by B.C. Adegui, a lawyer, former postmaster general of the Federation, and a member of Nigeria's ruling political party, the All Progressives Congress. Feels good to have you this morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Thanks and, for having and, me. And, and Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you too. <laughs> All right. Nice to be here again. I hope you have a few uh, new Naira notes in your pocket. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have shish. Or, or, is it the old, or is it the old ones that, <laughs> that you're spending? I don't, I don't have uh, the new Naira notes. And it's just a pity that um, our people have been subjected to this torture. Mm. Um, the intention behind it is salutary. In other jurisdictions of the world, they change their currency you wouldn't even know. And they're supposed to be the old and the new will run concurrently, and then with time, you will withdraw the old, pump the new currency out, and then lock the gate. That is how it is done in other jurisdictions. Yeah, but that's not, that's not what uh, uh, the, the CBN Act of 20, 2007, uh, Section 23, says. It gives 90 days, you know, and that's what the law says. So, so, and so, CBN will tell you that that's what they have followed. So, so my simple response to that is, Lex non cogit ad impossibilia. The law does not compel the doing of an impossibility. This does not make sense. What about and the... it's impracticable. Okay. What and we... Sorry, yeah, sure, and you, uh, the jurisprudential underpin of law is that it must serve the society. You must use law as a tool of social re-engineering. Mm -hmm. So don't cite section, whatever, of the CBA Act. But that's the law. That's the law, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that there's a compelling need now to change the law. Okay, because, so that's because a different, that's a different it's a different, argument. It's a different argument. Exactly. Because you have seen, you have seen that this law is not serving the purpose, the intention behind the law is to yeah, engender good governance. Mm -hmm. But people are suffering now. You're saying that it does not make sense. What about the government's explanation that the reason is to curb vote buying? Inter one, yeah. of, one of the reasons. One of the in, reasons, in, yes. In, I would like your thoughts on that. In, interesting. Yes. With due respect to those who are advancing that argument, I'm unable to align with it for the simple reason that this is not going to be the last elections we will have. Four years down the line, another election cycle will be with us. So if you want to cut vote buying in that election, are you going to decide the NARA again? What will be wrong with that? I'm asking you. So if that, if, so, if that were to be. So will you be deciding your NARA Every four years, you won't. You with, won't. With a view, uh, because the law with a view, the law that <laughs> yeah, you yeah, won't. So there's a time limit so, right. that yeah, the law, so law allows. Not so, allow, so, but so, I'm, so I'm, I'm view, posing that question. <laughs> so with a view to curbing vote buying. Yeah. But there are other things you can do to cut vote buying, and that's why I cannot agree more with Dr. Edeka Kalu, that accomplished uh, economist, economist. Yes. who was uh, one time Minister of Finance in Nigeria. Yes, right. He said that. After 62 years of independence, is this the best Nigeria can do? That you want to curb vote buying, you want to reduce the deleterious effect of money in politics, and all you can do is to change your currency. It, does, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. There are other things you can do. And I'm going to let you into yes. this. Good. Absolutely. Why do people buy votes? They buy votes because... Why do politicians... By po vote. Politicians. Why do people <laughs> sell votes? <laughs> well, yeah. That's the difference. Two things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why do politicians buy votes? Because yeah. they want to get back to power. Yes. Because the backside of office, what they derive from being in government, is humongous. And it's just a function of the fact that we have monetized politics. Why don't you just reduce the cost of governance? Why don't you just make political offices 
non-attractive. We did that before, don't forget. In the First Republic, people who were in Parliament got paid on part-time basis. Allowances, yes. Allowances. And there, ipso facto, it gave the people with salutary intentions the opportunity of being part of governance. Look, in this country today, you have good men and women who have bright ideas on how to embark on governance with a view to delivering what is called dividends of democracy. But these people are shut out from the political process because they don't have the money. And even if they have the money, they will believe that. Why would I spend fortune in order for me to represent you? I had contested election before in 2007, and I couldn't vote in my election. I sold properties. Why did I go into politics? I wanted to effect a change. But when I realized that I would continue to sell properties in order to pursue power with a view to helping people, I decided, no, I'm not going to have any of this again because I want to serve. Why would I sell my properties? Why did you have to sell your property? In order to serve. No, no, I mean, what, what did you need that amount of cash for? Politics in Nigeria is expensive. Presidential system of government in Nigeria is, for lack of a better description, humongous. Yes. Yeah, but what were you paying for? First, you were going to spend money to mobilize people. Okay. You were going to spend money to mobilize your supporters. You are going to spend money to get your agents motivated. Let's not just run away from the fact. There is too much money in Nigerian politics. And for me, it is because what our forefathers, the people who knew Nigeria, and I can give you their names, and Obafemi Awolowo, even before Bafemi Awolowo, the colonial overlords who, who gave us independence, when they were living, they agreed with Bafemi Awolowo, Nam Diazikiwe, Amadou Bill, and the rest of them on a system of government that they felt would deliver the goods for Nigeria. And parliamentary democracy was yes. a major, major. In parliamentary democracy, you don't have to contest all over Nigeria. That is, put in another way, for you to emerge the leader of your country, the entire country doesn't have to be your constituency. You are just going to contest in your constituency if you win, you become a member of the parliament, and your contemporaries. Just like we have in the UK. In the UK, Rishi and it's, Sunak, and it's working. Yes. Let me also give you, this conversation will be extensive in the sense that there are quite a number of things that we're not doing in Nigeria. Okay. I was a delegate to, to Jonathan's 2014 National Conference, and in one of my extensive researches, I stumbled on the fact that out of the 20 most prosperous countries in the world, 17 of them practice parliamentary system of government. Out of the 20 most corrupt countries in the world, 17 or 18 of them practice presidential system of government, including Nigeria. So this system... So you're advocating a return to parliament? Ab absolutely. If you want to curb corruption, just go for parliamentary system of government because Policies of government will be debated on a regular basis. You don't need too much money okay. before you can imagine. Then good people in the society will not be completely shut out. We have um, former retired principals of schools, schools. educationists, nurses, men and women of good character. Retired permanent secretaries and, and stuff like that. They don't have money. All right, so and you are shutting them out of government. All right, so make it less attractive and yes. that would help and, and less expensive, you know, <laughs> less ab ab expensive curb. so you have described president buhari's as you know nationwide broadcast as a recipe for anarchy you have also said that he has acted uh, you know in contempt of the supreme court you know a lot of you know lawyers will disagree with you as well but i wanted to touch on that aspect of recipe for anarchy right after that broadcast 
El Rafai, the Kaduna state governor, came out with a state, you know, wide broadcast. People have described it as a treasonable offense, saying that they should go against the president's directive. So I want to ask you, is that part of the anarchy that you are talking about? And just highlight that before rest, I go to my rest, next, rest, next rest, question. Because rest, rest. If you watch the <laughs> recipe, go ahead. <laughs> go, go ahead. Rest, rest ipsa Yes. The facts speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. I've got tremendous regard for the incumbent president. I mean, it's a man with good heart, good intentions. But what we have seen is that intentions alone don't and cannot translate to good governance. You've got to have a system in place that will engender good governance. And the anarchy that, will, that I made reference to is playing itself out. Nigeria is a federation. Legal tender is in the exclusive list of the constitution. And therefore, it has to be the prerogative of the central government. A subnational government shouldn't challenge the authority of the central government in matters touching and concerning legal currency. But the fact is that there's a Supreme Court judgment which all of us must obey anyway, including but not limited to Mr. President. A, a, a ruling. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, yeah, ruling. Which all of us must comply with. And Mr. President hasn't done that. Although, he may have good intentions. And I agree with my brother and colleague, Professor Skeyamo, that he has good intentions, but he may have been misled into doing this. So what we have seen is that if care is not taken, you see a state government saying that Supreme Court has said the old currency will remain legal tender. Continue to spend it. Okay. Is, it, is, it, is it the duty of the of state governors to enforce a Supreme Court's ruling? It is not the duty of the state government to do that. I agree. But the far remains that, that be the anarchy. Yeah, that, but, mm. but the far remains that that judgment or ruling should be complied with. All right. So, in order so to avoid let me tell you what some, some lawyers have said, which yeah. is, you know, what, whether you call it a ruling or a directive, is to preserve the status quo antebellum, which means that what the case was before the onset of the litigation. Their interpretation is that. What the case was is that is the, that secular, which is the central bank secular, on exactly when the old Naira was to lose its validity, and the president acted on that directive, on the actual um, um, case, how it was presented to the Supreme Court. What do you say on that? So the interesting about uh, <laughs> lawyers yeah. and interpretations is that you're going to have as many interpretations as you're going to have, you know, lawyers. As far as I'm concerned, my interpretation of the ruling is that the old and the current and the new, the new should run concurrently. And let's look at it from this perspective. The Supreme Court is also supposed to be an instrument of government or a, 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 an organ of government that we can use to stabilize the polity. Their judgments must be enforced in such a way that the society does not become anarchical. What do we have on our hands now? I really don't even know what the position is, whether the old note or the new note are legal tenders or not. No, but the position is clear. The, okay. the, the, new, the new notes are legal tender. Yeah. The old uh, 200 Naira notes, you, know, it is a, it, uh, you know, is it's also a legal tender. Yes. According to what, what, the brokers by the president. Yes. And that's what the majority of the people, you know, abide with. Yes. From what we have seen so far in the media. So, so, you also have some information regarding, uh, the CBN has said that the 500 Naira note, the 1,000 Naira note, should also be regarded. That, that has been debunked. And that has been, that has it been debunked. debunked yes. I have it, it was not about spending it. It's about collecting, collecting them back. Yeah. 
either directly at the CBN or by commercial banks. That was so. The so in all, in all of this conversation, yes. My idea about how to handle currency, yes. or my view, my opinion, yes. is that yeah. hey, whether you are going to spend them concurrently, whichever one you have termed as the old, even if they are no longer legal tender, you must still give value to the money. Yeah, CBN said yeah, they will CBN collect, said they will collect it. So, so that's, that's, that's the way out. Yeah, they, 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 they will collect them back. They are collecting them back. It. Yes. So, so for as long as you, for as long know, as yes, you, 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 you have yes, it. Yes. So, so the, the, the lesson for me is that we have not done it in a way that yeah, should be. It could have been a lot, a lot, a idea. lot of time. Okay. Yes. Implementation of yeah. same. Absolutely. Absolutely. And let us learn from history. We did it yeah. before. So why do we have this problem? And that's why some people are insinuating that perhaps there's more to it that made the highs. Okay, so, so that's where I'm coming, sir. Yeah. <laughs> why do you think that um, APC members, governors within your party, and even the candidate of your party, Ashwajibola Ahmed, you know, will think that they are the target of this of this policy. Why do they? Why are they so vehement in opposing it? In my view, I do not think it is proper to embark on currency exchange a few months and in an election. Is that the position of, of the governors and, and the candidates? My 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 my, my position. No, my question was that I, and why I, do I, you think that they? They, they feel that they are the target. It's, it's difficult to see. I can't, I can't speak for them. I can only hear a, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of people are saying that, could it be because um, around this time, four years ago, in 2019, that there were a couple of bullion vans who missed their way, as we've been told, uh, to a certain address in Bodilon. And that, you know, are, are we, is people, there likely to be a repeat of that? People can insinuate whatever they like. But it's not an insinuation, it happened. It, it, people can say whatever they like. You mean it didn't happen? I'm not in a position to confirm or deny that. Okay. The fact remains that you need a lot of money for political processes in Nigeria. There's a limit to the amount of cash that you can handle. By now, law. So, so why don't you, so why don't you, so why don't you get your law enforcement agent? or have a mechanism to ensure that if you set a limit for what politicians can spend, ensure they don't go There's beyond a limit the, already. Yeah, ensure they don't go beyond the threshold. And that to me is just an exercise in futility because yes, you can say don't spend money on this, but if you don't have means of ensuring that they don't spend, you know, more than that, it, it simply means in my view that as I said earlier, let's not cogit an impossibility. The law does not compare the doing of an impossibility. You set a limit for politicians how much they should spend, and you are not in a position to ensure that the limit is strictly adhered. But I would like for you to, Jake, you're, you're part of the APC, would like yeah. for you to answer that question because at this point, nine, I believe, APC governors have asked the Supreme Court to set aside the pronouncement of, of the, um, president. the president. I mean, why is it that the APC seems to be the only party that is feeling the brunt of this whole Naira redesign policy? As far as I'm concerned, I believe it is suspect the time at which you want to, you know, change From your... the same party? The same, the same president who goes about uh, at campaigns raising the hand of the candidate, Correct. you know, as, as the person who should be successor. People have their opinion. What are you suspecting? My, 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 what are you suspecting? I, 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 I suspect that uh, there are some fit columnists hmm. out there who don't want Ashwa Dubola Ahmed Tinubu to win the next election. That's my view. Yeah, but the president says this is my idea and that I authorized it. 
how much of how much of credit do you give to the president in taking decisions? Because you you keep saying that he was either misled or that there are fifth columnists who are controlling him. Let's let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Okay, you yeah. have said fifth columnists. Yeah. The governor of Kaduna State in that statewide broadcast mentioned, you know, maybe an interim government taking over, led by an army general. What do you make of his actual statement? A retired statement? army general. A retired <laughs> army general. <laughs> Lots of conversations are out there. But the, what, is, what is comforting is that the president has said that, A, there's no plan for any, any interim government, yes. and that he's backing the, the presidential candidate of APC, right. and that he will be his worthy successor. Do, I does that reassure you? Yeah, it gives me a lot of hope. Do you think that the APC will survive this seeming internal wrangling that is almost leading to an implosion? I, be, I, I believe we will do, and I believe we are going to win this election. Well, this anarchy you were talking about, um, even in Kaduna State, Steve, you also sent me that video. We had our reporter on ground, you know, asking residents about the directive, the president's directive, and they are majorly going with the president's directive and they are ignoring the governor of the state. So, I mean, I just wanted to, you know, point that out to you as well. Let's just hope that uh, we're going to have a free, fair, credible elections and we learn lessons therefrom. Mm -hmm. And for me, the lesson is this, that, hey, look at the entire political process, yeah. ensure that you reduce cost of governance, Yes. Ensure that the parasites of office that politicians that they are killing for. They are killing for. I mean, they would do anything to get to their office. Yeah. If you can make political offices unattractive yeah. and you get good people with bright ideas who have the interests of the people at heart, yes. they will become political players and then Nigeria can be a better place for all of us. All right, so well, before we let you go, what's your takeaway from... Uh, the general overview of the tension around this uh, 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 redesigning of the Naira. Uh, just yesterday, the governor of Lagos State, uh, Babajide Songwulu, uh, made it, you know, a particularly brilliant um, uh, a broadcast, you know, basically to urge Lagosians to become, uh, which was a commendable uh, thing to do compared to what we have had from governor of Ogun State and in particular, Governor of uh, uh, um, Kaduna, Governor of Kano, who are more belligerent, who are more like continue to spend the Naira, etc. Why I'm asking this is pockets of, 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 of violent uh, riots, but only limited to the South, not a single one so far in the North, where they tend to spend more Naira than in the South. Is this not a, a, a repeat of the NSAS things? People are shouting in the South, people are dying in the South, but the North, you know, appears united, appears unbothered. It's, is there something going it's, on? It, it underscores the way Nigeria is. We're a multi-ethnic, multi-religious society. We are disparate people with different orientation, wishes and aspirations. And therefore, you need to have a kind of constitutional framework that would take care of this diversity. Our differences, rather. Take care of our differences in order to forge you know, a strong union. You know. I'll commend the approach of Governor of Lagos State, um, Mr. Ababa Dede Sonwolo, to other governors. We need to ensure we have a country. Yes. First and foremost. First and foremost, for all of us to, we need peace. But having said this, let us reset Nigeria in such a way that anytime we want to go for an election, it will not be as if we are preparing for a war. Election in other jurisdictions, they're supposed to be fun. Vote your candidate. It is supposed to be um, we're marketing ideas and then let the best guy emerge. It is not so in Nigeria because there's too much money in political office. Okay. You have governors having access to millions and billions of naira, in some cases, 
a security vote, you need to take a critical look at that and ensure that we de-emphasize the role of money in Nigerian politics. Yeah, That's right. the way to go. I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad you're saying this because, you know, it, it That's the whole idea. Is, 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 is what the country needs. Absolutely. Absolutely. And let's hope that the candidates are listening and that whoever will succeed, President Muhammadu Buhari, will see that as an important area to focus on. More so that people like your good selves, you know, you were part of the 2014, uh, what was that thing called again? National, uh, national, 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 national Conference. National Conference. That's, why, that's why it's imperative that whoever wins yes. should form a government of national unity. All right, then. Based on, based on electoral performance at the polls. A government of national unity? Oh, yeah, that's what Nigeria needs invite now. Invite others that were not part of the... Abs absolutely. If I try you wins, you think that you should include... I will, I will, I will strongly recommend to him that let him think like a statesman about the future of Nigeria and not about the fortune of our political party. In other jurisdictions, if it were to be U.S., mm. if Nigeria were to be U.S., yes. we will not be talking about GDP, APC. What we need is a bipartisan approach to solve some of the problems that we have in Nigeria. And we have quite a number. Mm. And it is having a government of national unity that will not shut out a critical segment of the society. I mean, for, I mean, look at Peter Obi. Yeah, I'm not rooting for him. I publicly endorsed Ashiwa Dubala Metinubu as my candidate. But I believe that if Ashiwa wins, it should, Peter Obi should, should be part of it. should be part of the government. All right. We want to, on that note, we want thank to thank you. Thank you very much for joining us on The Morning my, Show. My, my thank pleasure. You.